I find very interesting. So a lot of comic artists, they work in a, usually it's digital or in what would be called traditional medium, mm -hmm. paper, pen and ink, um, or write on a computer with like a Wacom, something like that where they can then print it, work on it, and send it to their publisher. Mm -hmm. Like you literally just said, so you went straight to ink on paper. Yeah. Um, and before we set everything up, you were sitting there. So um, when you draw all of your panels, are they all drawn right in your notebook, right with ink to paper? Yeah, yeah. So like for the Don't Fret book, I just went straight to ink. I didn't measure out like panel borders. I would just draw like the box or the panel, and then I would just start drawing just Don't Fret, like just start drawing the characters. Usually we start with the dialogue, and I would just shove the dialogue at the top to get it out of the way, so it's like I, I didn't have to float them and work, think about composition too hard because it was challenging. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the Sabrini story, I'm still doing daily panels, but I've decided to use a pencil and rule it and make the panels all identical. <laughs> They're all five-inch panels now, and uh, and just doing really quick sketches of composition, like this character's going to be represented as a circle to go here and here and here. And okay. Just so I can have a little bit more freedom with, uh, with error and like <laughs> things like that, because there was times where I'd start a don't fret panel and then just scrap it and like flip the page and start again and yeah, I was, stuff uh, like that. I was going to ask, so as someone who I'm not an artist in any capacity, um, but I understand that like when you're writing with pen and ink, pen is permanent. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to draw a comic and especially tell a story like you are very long term, um, the frank bravery to just go straight to it and start writing um, and drawing is pretty risky. Yeah. Um, so I, I did want to sort of ask one with Instagram, like you said, you can start a page if you mess it up or if it doesn't turn out how you like, you can scrap it and then post it instantly. How has over the last three years of working on Don't Fret and now Sabrini, what's changed? Well, uh, with, with the Don't Fret story, I knew I wanted it to be black and white because of printing costs. It's mm. like 10 or 20 times as expensive to print in color than in black and white. Like, it's an absurd amount of, like I'll, I'll print like 90 page zines mm -hmm. and like those 86 pages that are not the cover will be cheaper than the one page for the cover. Wow. Which is, which I'll print in color and it's just like an absurd cost. So that was one thing, but then I, come Sabrini, I wanted to work in color more and sacrifice the idea of printing like lots of little zines mm -hmm. uh, to to work in color because I just, I love color. I love the idea of working in color. Okay. But uh, it's just super expensive to print. So I mean, we'll see what yeah. happens with that. But For sure. So just to talk about like frankly, the print costs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, you do have Don't Fret as a, a finished one one singular book, correct? Yeah, or a yeah. Tome. I made 50 copies of it. 50 copies of Don't Fret. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's a, a red hardcover, correct? Yeah, it's right here. Actually, I'll pull it out. Yes, it's please do. I donated one of my copies to the library. I, that is whoop, <laughs> that is a beautiful book. I don't know how well we can be able to see it here, but it's beautiful. Thanks. Um, and. Yeah, so when it came to making these, like I love the texture of it. Um, obviously, it's got all of your art in it. Um, how did you go about even composing it? Like, was it very simple, just go through your Instagram history and pull it, so, or? So each time I finished a chapter, I printed little chapter zines that were, that were like that big. I think they were four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. Um, so I already had all of the files digitally made. Uh, if you're wondering why I printed it vertically, it's because I wanted it to feel like Instagram and like a scroll. Yeah. We're kind of in this era where we look at things vertically more than horizontally. So I wanted to, I want to keep making books in a vertical way instead of in a horizontal way. That's all the zines were originally printed too. And then when I was coming to the end of the story, I knew I wanted to make books because I'm obsessed with self-publishing and I've, I hadn't done book binding before mm -hmm. so I started to I took a, a book at home and I like 
really observed it and like started tearing it up and seeing how it was constructed. And then I made three like test copies of a hardcover book, wow. just using like crappy paper and I and like they were all really small, like little two inch things. <laughs> and then I and then I and then I just dove into this project and it took me way like way more time than I ever thought it would and I probably won't do it again for a long time. Yeah. Cuz it's like quite a process. I had to screen print all the covers in my living room. I put the embroidery on the spine and on the cover. Had to cut everything. There's like three pieces of card that I had to cut to wrap it around and then sew all of the signatures. A signature is a group of paper that gets glued into the spine, so oh. it's like a long process. And there's, there's still parts of that book that I don't like how it's made, <laughs> but that's okay. It was a super fun project. I'm really happy that it's all, uh, it's all done now. Well, I mean, I, I suppose that's a part of learning, right? So yeah, yeah, exactly. When, I mean, I, I personally, that, that's fascinating. In, in a, an age where you can pick up a comic for three bucks and it's printed and stapled and it's flimsy and just kind of thrown or, mm -hmm. like you said, having come from zines and working with zines, which are inherently, like they don't have crazy spines and stuff like that. To put the effort in personally to make such a beautiful and well put together book, like a physical hardcover book nowadays, when you could easily turn around and say, you know what, here's every post I've made, here's all my comics digitally, here's a PDF, go for it. To actually sit there and one, figure out how to make the book, um, but also to put it all together, to take that time. Like you said, it's painstaking, it's a very long process, but I think you end up with such a beautiful product and I also at the same time find it almost bizarre because you've done this solely through Instagram and yet you've turned around and made a book, which is almost in a way like a dying medium. Yeah, I just, I love print so much. I don't want to discredit digital artists or people who like reading Kindles and things like that. <laughs> but personally, I just love print. Like, I, I collect books at home and I very rarely will read comics digitally mm -hmm. because it just doesn't, it just doesn't work for me. My eyes get really tired really quickly yes. and the fatigue settles in. And I didn't want to get my book published in a mass way because the idea of my books being garbage is really repulsive to me mm -hmm. and so the idea of putting all of my effort into making 50 copies was a way of making sure that like if you buy one of these you're going to cherish it and it will be like something that you'll want instead mm -hmm. of just maybe I'll like this I'm going to pick it up because it's only $15 and maybe I'll like it and then Two weeks later, you see it on the curb or something like that. Yeah. And it's like there's enough of that stuff going on right now, and just like the the small press of it all. For sure. Well, I mean, I think if any author ever had to by hand make their own books, it would be an impressive feat. Yeah, and especially in mass quantities, it's like just insanity, really. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was super awesome. fun, and now, it, now, it's, now it's done. This is the last copy I had, and I gave it to the library. So. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so as a part of your work with uh, the Canada Comics Open Library, um, you say that Rotom was looking for artists and had found yourself. Uh, and as someone who has self-published books, uh, as well as sort of individual page comics online, uh, how do you find that your work as an independent artist sort of interacts with your work here at the library? Well, I'm, I'm here drawing all the time. Like on every Sunday, I host the drawing club at the Canada Comics Open Library. So from 11 to three, I'm here sitting down drawing and people come and hang out and I bring a whole bunch of different drawing tools for people to try and we just talk and talk shop, talk comics and all that stuff. Um, and then I'm, I'm constantly doing drawings for the comic, Canada Comics Open Library, so I've done a little short animation for here. Uh, as a part of the Regent Park newsletter, I do a four-panel comic called oh. The Comics Corner that uh, we put in the, the monthly uh, newsletter for Regent Park, and it's just a cute little thing about the comics library each time I'm working on right now where it's just like somebody reading a comic then the next panel, there's like two people on each of their shoulder, and then the next panel, there's like 
six people and then finally like the whole panel is covered and everyone's reading like, <laughs> the one comic so just little sweet things like that I get to do for the library and yeah just always doing little drawings here and there that's for, awesome for sea call and yeah. yeah now like like you said you you host the my post the the drawing group every Saturday yeah yeah or uh, Sunday yeah Sunday my apologies that's so okay um, like you said you kind of come you bring some drawing supplies um, and people are welcome to come in um, do, is it do you formally show people how to draw, or is it just sort of a place where people can come, jam, be artistic? Yeah, I mean, if anyone has questions about drawing, I'm always happy to answer them. Um, typically, the people who come are already fairly experienced drawers. Last week, there was a few uh, younger younger people, people who are like 10, 10 to 15 years old, so I got to give them a couple of pointers in drawing and show them how to use brushes with ink and nibs with ink and things like that. But, uh, yeah, only if people ask. I'll always gladly teach anyone the stuff that I've taught myself and have learned through others, but uh, some of the guys who come to the drawing club are so good and proficient at drawing <laughs> that it's like I've, they're teaching me stuff all the time, and we're all just feeding each other's uh, knowledge. That's perfect. Yeah, it's the best. I love it. Right on. Now, um, like you said, you, you bring drawing supplies. Um, I assume these other artists that come bring theirs as well? Yep, yep. Okay, and for yours, I obviously can't speak for anyone else, but for you, um, you bring them, I'm assuming, to share, correct? Yep, yep, totally. I have, like, my pencil case, which, my, with, which houses my coveted items that are n off limits for people, but then I have a big sack of pens and pencils yeah. and brushes and inks and nibs and all that stuff for for everyone to use. Okay, so if any random person wanted to come and practice a little bit or learn something, um, they're more than welcome to come on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday, 11 to 3. I'm here every Sunday, 11 to 3. If I'm not here, we will be posting about it on our Instagram, which is at Canada Comics OL. At Canada Comics OL on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, I think. Yeah, so we're always posting when, when Drawing Club gets canceled, but it's typically every Sunday on Sundays between 11 and 3. Uh, anyone is welcome to come by, sort of jam out, draw, enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously while they're there, we would love for them to pick up some books. Um, so how does one go about doing that? How do you borrow a book, rent a book? What do you do? How does it work? So currently we are a loan-in library. You cannot take out the books until another two months or so pass. Because oh, fortunately, uh, in our last crowdfunding campaign back in October, November, we managed to hit our third crowdfunding goal, which Congrats. was to make the library circulating. So we just, just ordered, I don't even know if I sh am supposed to be announcing this or not, but we just ordered a barcode scanner and a barcode printer. Everything's cataloged already, so over the next couple of months, we're gonna go through the process of choosing the books that we still do not want to lend for rarities purposes. Okay, and yeah. the fact that they might walk and not, walk come, and back. not come back. That's and fair. And to, to get it ready for, for loaning. So hopefully, well, in the springtime, we will be a fully functioning loaning library. Um, the way that you get memberships is it's completely pay what you can with a $5 suggested donation. We also have a pool of memberships that have been already paid for by other donators. So oh, okay. If you purchase a membership for uh, $10 instead of 5 we say that that $5 goes into the pool of memberships for people who are uh, less rich than other people, I guess is the way, the way to put it. And for sure, yeah. That mon we... Monetarily rich, I guess, is a better yeah. way to put it. You can kind of... If I say if I gave ten bucks, five of it would go to pay it forward. So someone who maybe doesn't have the five bucks for whatever reason, they can come in and still enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. And and we often give those to the the younger uh, people that come into the library. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we just fill out a library card, give it to you. It's good for a year, and then you can take out the books in a couple of months. So that's that's the story there. That's exciting. Oh, it's it's so exciting. It's like. I love this place, and I understand why a lot of people would want to take out the books and feel unattracted because you can't do that. I still encourage people to please come and read the books here. It's such a lovely space. It's so cozy in here during the weekend weekend. But uh, yeah, a couple of months, we get, we get to let them out. Super exciting. <laughs> That's perfect. Now, where is it?